Okay, today we're making a, a foldable about triangle congruence that you can use as reference when you are doing your work in this unit. And so your final one should look like this. So you're going to start by taking three sheets of paper. I want my pink on the outside, so I'm putting them like this. Then you set them... So that, set them so they are about one finger width apart down here, just enough to write on each one. Then you're going to take them and fold them in half so that you have that same, just a little tab to write on each one. So you fold them like that, make sure you have the tabs here, and then take a stapler and staple across the top. Then you label it triangle congruence. Okay, and then we're going to come down the tabs. Our first one's going to be side, side, side. Second is side, angle, side. Third is angle, side, angle. Next is angle, angle, side. And last is hypotenuse, leg. These are all the shortcuts we can use to prove triangles congruent. And these are all what they all look like visually. So next I'm going to cut these off in order and paste them onto each piece of the triangle. So I glue down my first one, which is that side, side, side. And now I'm going to write my congruence statement. So I know these are sides because they're all labeled for me. Six centimeters, six centimeters, four and four, seven and seven. And so I just have to mark which side goes with which side. And so I list out my four centimeters is... A, B, and so A, B is congruent to D, F, because those are the sides that both have 4 centimeters. Next I'll do my 6 centimeters, so B, C is congruent to my D, E, and then last of all is the 7 centimeters, so C, A, is congruent to EF. And then I do my little triangle congruence and that's just labeling the same in the same order I did them. So ABC means I go to the four centimeters, six centimeters, and here I'm going to go from the same thing. So four centimeters to six centimeters would be F, D, E. And so the order matters. F and A are going to be congruent angles here, and so on and so forth. And they are congruent by side, 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 because it is three different sides of the triangles that are labeled for me. All right, next we have side, angle, side. And so I'm going to cut and paste this triangle on. And I start by labeling again what's congruent. And so I look, these ones both have one mark on them. So AB is congruent 
to EF. Uh, then I look at the congruent angles that are shown for me in the middle, and so that is angle A is congruent to angle E because they've shown that to me. And then my side AC is congruent to ED. And so this time I have a side labeled, I have an angle sandwiched in between it, and then another side labeled. So that's side, angle, side. So triangle ABC is congruent to triangle, and I look, since I started with A, I have to start with E, follow down the one side, which is F, and then to the D. So I'm always making sure I go in the same order to match up every part. And that's, they're congruent by side, angle, side. Now I go on to angle, side, angle. I glue on my next triangle and label what I have. So here, angle A is marked for me and it's congruent to angle D which has that same one mark on it for me. Then I have in between the two marked angles is this side, AC, is the same as DF. and that's marked by this one line. And then angle C is congruent to angle F. So I have an angle, a side, and an angle. And so triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DEF. And I make sure, again, I'm matching up the matching angles. So F and C match up, D and A match up, B and E are those third angles in the middle. And that is by angle, side, angle. And it's important when I have angle, side, angle, both angles are touching the side that is marked congruent for us. They're both touching. And that's to differentiate between our next triangle, which is angle, angle, side that we're going to do and here also has two angles and a side matched up for us, but this time instead of the side being in between the two angles, the side is only touching one angle. And so that's the difference between angle side angle and angle angle side. And so I'll glue this one on. and mark my angle G as the one mark. It's congruent to angle K with one mark. This time there's no side in between them, so I'll go to my second angle. So J is congruent to angle M. And those ones mark for me. And then the side JH is marked with this mark here, is congruent to side ML. So I have angle, angle, side. And so I have triangle GJH is congruent to triangle KML by angle, angle, side. All right, and then our last one is when we have right triangles. And so here, I have side-side angle, but that's not an option. If I have um, side angle side, the angle always has to be sandwiched in between the two of those. So here I have side side angle, it doesn't work. So instead, when I have a right triangle, um, 
So if it is a right triangle, the hypotenuse is what's opposite to the right angle. That's called hypotenuse. Okay, and then the leg is any other side. So if we have a right triangle, then we can mark our AC is congruent to FD. And that's our hypotenuse for both of them. It's across from that right angle. And then BC is congruent to FE, which is the leg. So leg is either of these sides that is touching the right angle. Those are both called legs. And so we have triangle ABC is congruent to triangle DBC by hypotenuse leg. Okay, and that's your foldable, so now you can use it to help you work through your packet.